Um, and so we're really, really super excited uh, to have this, this closing keynote. Um, Catherine actually found a, a white paper on the CNCF website that kind of walked through um, some of what Mercedes has been doing with Kubernetes in-house and looked at the paper and looked at the authors and was like, okay, this is really good stuff and we want to get them here to talk live at Kube Crash. So thank you, Catherine, for the idea. And um, thank you. Is our team here? Our team is here. So this talk is we're going to welcome Sean, who's a software engineer at Mercedes-Benz Tech Innovation. So let's add you. Oh, we've we're, both of us are adding you. Um, and you're here to talk to us about Kubernetes and going multi-cluster and management. So welcome. Thank you, Sean, for being here. Well, thank you a lot for having me here. Um, I'm really excited to participate in Cube Crash. I mean, it's the two favorite topics of myself, multi-cluster and Kubernetes. So okay. that's great. Yeah, um, and at some point we'll, we will post the link to that um, paper that you, you co-wrote as well so everybody can check that out afterwards but um we're gonna give you the floor and uh thank you again we're so excited for this thank you for joining us thank you so much yeah hello everyone and welcome to crashers um come along and join me on the journey to kubernetes native multi-cluster management um, for this trip i prepared this camping van and as you can see it has an extendable roof making it flexible and scalable just like a kubernetes cluster so let's see what Kubernetes is capable of uh, when talking about cluster management. Um, I'm Sean, working as a cloud native platform software engineer at Mercedes-Benz Tech Innovation for over three years now. Um, here I prepared some coffee for you as this is the last session tonight. So please take a seat, make yourself comfortable, buckle up and get ready for an exciting ride as I take you through our journey of managing a fleet of Kubernetes clusters at enterprise scale. Um, first, I would like to leave a few words about what my team is doing. We develop and operate a company internal Kubernetes platform uh, for over eight years now. It is used by Mercedes-Benz worldwide. We run more than 900 on-premises and off-premises clusters with over 6,700 nodes distributed across data centers in the United States. Um, Germany and China. Our private cloud uh, clusters are based on OpenStack infrastructure and the public cloud offering is based on AWS. Uh, the platform relies on 100% free and open source software and our business partners, they get an admin-like access to the cluster. And of course they have built-in security hardening, full automation and uh, yeah, self-service for cluster ordering. Just a few notes about the history. So everything started about eight years ago, 2015, where we had like a one single cluster for all, project, uh, all projects um, that was running on a managed virtual machines. So a rather static environment and projects were separated by namespaces. Everything was based on tickets. So it was a manual process if a project wanted to use Kubernetes, but however, we were able back then to have the first Kubernetes applications running in production, which was an achievement for itself. And then over the course of yeah, three years until 2018, those ticket-based operations were replaced by self-service cluster ordering. So there was a cluster provisioning API that mainly triggered a pipeline which then would run Terraform scripts to provision infrastructure. And we had custom tooling and Ansible to provide the Kubernetes clusters. And the problem with pipeline-based automation is that with a large scale, you have errors that you probably manually have to resolve and it was just not fitting our requirements anymore. Um, and by the, by the way, I forgot that. Um, so we started with shared clusters with namespace separating, but later we had um, the need for dedicated clusters. So every application team could order their own cluster with dedicated control plane and worker nodes. Eventually, we moved from a pipeline-based automation to the um, operator-based automation. So we wanted to somehow manage infrastructure and the cluster management within Kubernetes itself. And luckily there's this great project called Cluster API, 
which I will be introducing in a few slides. And with that, um, for managing our clusters, we were able this year to also offer an off-premises offering uh, in AWS, leveraging multi-cloud. So until this year, we only had, had the on-premises offering. Now we are also on AWS. And our overall aim is to manage everything the Kubernetes style and make it Kubernetes native. Before we hit the road, I would like to give some driving instructions and put the final destination into the navigation system. So we have Kubernetes native and multi-cluster management. So adopting a Kubernetes native approach means applying the core principles of Kubernetes. As you know, Kubernetes abstracts components into resources such as pods, services, deployments, config maps, secrets, and so on. And the Kubernetes native approach extends this concept to our use case cluster management. So this would include um, having something inside Kubernetes for managing clusters that also allows scaling, rolling updates of the Kubernetes nodes, health checks, and a constant reconciliation of the desired state. And luckily, there's a great pattern called the operator pattern that um, really helps us here. So Kubernetes is designed for automation. And with the operator pattern, we are able to teach Kubernetes new tricks. So in our example, it's expanding the automation possibilities. And this, or the operator pattern, makes use of custom resource definitions to define and extend resources beyond what Kubernetes provides out of the box. So in our case, managing clusters, of course, means to have something, a custom resource, that represents clusters, cluster components, and configuration. And yeah, one great example of that operator is Cluster API, which I will be explaining in a few slides. So this turtle on the left side represents a single workload cluster. It has a dedicated control plane and one to many worker nodes. This is usually the cluster that we provide to our business partners and application teams. And when we want to scale, it means we have a fleet of clusters with dedicated control planes and worker nodes. Um, so many instances of that turtle. And the overall goal is to manage infrastructure and the cluster lifecycle within Kubernetes itself. Okay, so eventually we hit the road. Um, with this camping van and our first aim is to adopt cluster API. As I told you, we have been using uh, Terraform for, for our fleet management in the beginning, but as it was a yeah, pipeline-based approach, we now wanted to adopt something that was an operator-based approach. So what is cluster API? Cluster API is um, a project in the cluster lifecycle working group, and it focuses on providing declarative APIs and tooling to simplify the provisioning, the upgrading and operating of multiple Kubernetes clusters. So if I quote the project page, it's Kubernetes all the way down, meaning we have a Kubernetes cluster managed by another Kubernetes cluster. So mainly with custom resources and controllers. The core of cluster API is the management cluster. The management cluster can be bootstrapped by having this great um, tool from the project called cluster cuttle and running the init command. You can choose your infrastructure provider, which in this case is OpenStack, but it can be anything such as AWS, Azure, GCP, Hetzner, and many, many more. The bootstrap provider and control plane provider, kubeadm in our case, um, but also there are a few others available today. And now we want to have a closer look into that management cluster. So a Kubernetes native approach is to leverage custom resources. And that is exactly what Cluster API does. Cluster API introduced these custom resources you can see on this slide. And we have four main controllers in the management cluster. That is the Cluster API controller manager, then the control plane and the bootstrap controller, and then the middle box uh, is the provider-specific implementation, which is in this case OpenStack. But as I told you, there are many other providers today. So behind the scenes of Cluster API, you have this cluster resource. 
And there's always a provider-specific implementation uh, it's named similar to the cluster CRD. Uh, in this case, it's the OpenStack cluster. And this provides the network and the load balancer to um, communicate with the Kubernetes API. And then you have a similar pattern as with core Kubernetes. You have a machine deployment, a machine set, and a machine. So the machine represents a Kubernetes node. One node is a Kubernetes, uh, one Kubernetes node is a machine, and that is supervised by the machine set, which is supervised by the machine deployment. And it's similar to what you have with pods. So imagine the machine being a pod. The machine set is the replica set, and the machine deployment is the deployment as you know it from pods, right? So leveraging this um, pattern, you can also use the machine deployment for scaling, so adding multiple nodes to the cluster or reducing the nodes. And the machine set will ensure a rolling update of those Kubernetes nodes. When looking at the um, OpenStack layer, you have the machine template that represents your virtual machine and includes information, for example, about the flavor you would like to choose, so the CPU and memory available in the VM, and which um, image to use to provision the VM. In on AWS, the AWS machine would represent an EC2 instance, for example. So when we want to create a cluster with cluster API, we have to create a set of resources. And those are highlighted now in those red boxes. So those resources have to be created by some kind of automation to let cluster API provision your infrastructure and your Kubernetes cluster at the end. And you can also use the cluster cut tool that has templating built in. Um, but for our automation cases, we have a custom controller doing this stuff. Okay, so that's cluster API behind the scenes. Uh, if you want to adopt cluster API yourself, make sure to check the uh, KubeCon talk by my colleague Tobias and I from last year, how we migrated 700 Kubernetes cluster to cluster API with zero downtime. And Tobias made this great repository where he shows how you can adapt cluster API with your very own provider uh, in three steps. That's the cluster infrastructure, the control plane, and the machine deployment. And he has demonstrations step-by-step -step for the providers OpenStack and Docker, which you can run on your local machine uh, using Kind. So it's a really great tool. Check it out. Uh, I really like it. Right, okay, so after hitting the road, we eventually have to make a pause. Um, and that's what we do here with this camping van. And the next step is uh, after leveraging this cluster lifecycle and infrastructure management within cluster AP, uh, within the management cluster, we would now have like to we would now like to take a look at the state. So before, well, we started at the point where the state was external to the whole management cluster. The state is some kind of meta information, um, what the business partner would like within their cluster. So how many nodes, which flavor to choose. And the task now is to move everything from outside into the Kubernetes cluster itself. So mainly using custom resources. And this car represents this. So you have a trunk. And of course, you want to put um, your camping equipment into the trunk, such as putting the state into the Kubernetes cluster itself. So initially, we had this pipeline-based provisioning. A developer would order a cluster via a web interface. And the provisioning API would then save this kind of meta information about the cluster into a key value store, which where we were using Consul by HashiCorp. And then Terraform was used to provision the infrastructure and custom tooling was used to initialize the Kubernetes cluster and add further nodes into the cluster. And the developer has the yeah, cube control access to for managing the application in self-service. So first step was to move to the operator-based provisioning, which is cluster API. Cluster API is able to not only provision the infrastructure, but also initialize the cluster, upgrade, scale, and add further nodes. 
Um, but we were still relying on the key value store by console for storing our state. And as you know, HashiCorp changed licenses and we want to use 100% free and open source software. It's still a great tool, but yeah, we want to do something different. So eventually we are moving state from that key value store into Kubernetes itself using custom resources. And this I will show on the next slide how it looks like. And our custom tooling in Ansible is replaced by something like Flux uh, with a GitOps approach and add-ons or cluster add-ons are provisioned by this cluster API add-on provider for Helm. But more about that on the next slide. So what you can see here in the yellow box is the management cluster. And specifically, we see a single namespace at this point. And within or this namespace represents a single cluster. So we have many, many namespaces representing many, many clusters. In, in fact, 900 at the moment. And all we will do is we have this cluster provisioning API that now doesn't trigger any pipeline or creates cluster API resources directly. Um, we have a layer in front of that. And that is the custom controller with custom resource definitions. I call it here the fleet cluster. So this fleet cluster is representing the meta information. So information about which uh, size of cluster and which flavor to use. And we split this into two parts because we have a provider specific um, part as well, which yeah, has some meta information about the network, for example, which is always specific to the provider. Could be OpenStack, could be AWS. And now this custom controller watches those resources and this will create those cluster API resources listed here on the top, which I've talked about before, right? So for example, yeah, cluster, machine deployment, and the machine template. And the next layer would be cluster add-ons. Cluster add-ons refer to add-ons that you have to install inside your workload or target cluster. Without that, it will not work. And that can be the cluster networking interface, the container storage interface or the cloud provider interface. Um, this is still work in progress. We haven't been using the cluster API add-on provider for Helm yet. We have a custom controller at the moment, but we want to use existing tools. So we are looking into this add-on provider for Helm and this will look as follows. So whenever we have this fleet cluster within the namespace, the custom controller will uh, create a set of Helm chart proxy which represent those tools here, the CNI, CNI, CPI. And then the add-on provider will ensure that those Helm charts are provisioned into the target cluster. And then lastly, we have also optional add-ons such as metrics or service mesh or ingress. And here we will be using Flux with the GitOps approach and the custom controller of fleet cluster will create two resources mainly add-on cluster and add-on bundle and flux will do its magic with provisioning customized or helm based deployments okay so eventually we reach our target being kubernetes native moving or having moved the business logic into custom controllers and we are managing desired state within kubernetes itself and yeah, you see the river behind our camping van. Um, and eventually you will find a road or a bridge to go over that river to reach your destination. Um, so always look out for, for the best ways to reach what you are trying for multi-cluster management. To summarize this a little bit, so we started with pipelines and ended with Kubernetes native approach using the operator pattern, having a desired state in Kubernetes in the management cluster. You have continuous reconciliation by a control loop, uh, which is always good uh, also for error handling. And you have custom resources for having the state in the management cluster and a controller for the business logic and automation. And I have this here in five categories. So initially we started with Jenkins for the pipeline automation. Now it's Kubernetes itself having the operator pattern. We replace console as key value store with having the state and custom resources also in Kubernetes itself. The provisioning was based on Terraform. 
Now it's cluster. A Sorry. Now it's cluster API, and yeah, cluster add-ons were initially handled by custom tooling, but we are now looking into the Helm provider, add-on provider, which greatly integrates with cluster API, and the pipeline-based Ansible script will be replaced by Flux. Also leveraging the operator pattern and having the state in Kubernetes itself. Right, so this is um, the puzzle of tools that we have been using and we added new tools to this puzzle such as Flux and Cluster API. Now, sometimes it's good to remove tools and create an easier to maintain version. Um, open source is great, they have many tools available. So check the CNCF landscape to find the appropriate tools and check the community for yeah, best practices. I know Kubernetes is still hard and cluster management also. Um, sometimes it's good to choose the tools by difficulty or whatever knowledge is present in your team. So on the long run, you can make the best use of it. That brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, happy to answer any questions. I think you're muted, Danielle and Lisa. Sorry, that was my fault. This is why she gets all the power. And they don't let me touch things. Um, that was my fault. Uh, thank you. Thank so you, Sean. That was a fantastic talk. Really appreciate it. Re really appreciate all the, the shares you've done on, on X now, not Twitter, X. Um, if there's any questions for Sean, please feel free to ask them now. Um, I'm sure, Sean, you'll hang around for a few more minutes. Um, I'm just kind of. Definitely. Um, if there's any questions yeah that and let me right check the other places that people have been asking questions and also i um posted the link to your fabulous case study thank oh, you giving you, you i have maybe time. um just two more slides as i still have to, like, i think a few minutes um no, yeah. Oh, okay yeah, sorry i You're not wasn't here. sure about the time so yeah mercedes-benz oh, no, uh, mercedes-benz has this FOSS manifesto in open source software manifesto um, you can go to opensource.mercedesbenz.com to check it out. Um, it yeah, puts the open source a strategy and yeah, tells us developers to prefer free and open source software tools to be an active citizen, to contribute and be a responsible citizen. Uh, so I think it's great to have this in the company. And if you like to adapt something like it, it's open source itself. So make a fork. Um, adapted to your needs and helps you maybe to bring your company uh, also near to to the open source community. Uh, also, I have this page here about additional information. So definitely check out our keynote from last year of running Kubernetes for Mercedes-Benz over seven years. Uh, the talk from Tobias and I about migrating to Cluster API. If you would like to learn more about the history, um, then check out this. Copenhagen DevOps conference talk, and also the great step-by-step uh, -step guide from Tobias. I highly recommend it. <laughs> okay, um, that that's all awesome. I see that there's some folks from uh, the local user group that I've been running for over 10 years in the San Francisco Bay Area, and they know that we always tend to end our conferences and meetups with a, um, a happy hour. Um, in my case, it's always the perfect Manhattan is my post-show uh, bevy, but uh, thank you, Joseph. Um, in this case, the happy hour is going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina, because we are dovetailing from All Things Open, a fabulous conference. And um, I, I have to give the Marriott a big shout out because it was, we streamed now twice from a hotel room, um, and this one was, not easy to figure out and they have really gone to bat to let us have this space. Um, so thank you, Marriott. Really appreciate that. Um, we have a lot of thank yous, but so let's see, Sean, are there any before, other? Before we, before we move on to that, Sean, um, will you be at KubeCon in a few weeks time? Unfortunately not now, but I will uh, be in okay. Paris. Well then um, for all of you who want to meet Sean, I'm sure, you know, social media it up. I'm sure there will be Definitely. lots of chance to reach out to Sean and ask questions. Thank you so much for being here. We really, really appreciate it. 
yeah. the talk will be recorded um, and the link will be up so everyone will be able to Yeah, see and later. we loved the uh, OpenStack shout out. A uh, few of Joseph I've known from the OpenStack community from many, many years ago. Um, that was kind of a blast from the past and a really cool thing. So I tweeted that out for the OpenStack Foundation. You'll probably get some love uh, from them as well. But so many great communities. So much great technology uh, that we focused on today. So that was a great presentation to kind of bring the whole ecosystem of cloud native together. Okay, great. so I thank you. I'm gonna move you out, Sean. Yep, and Alexander is asking for links from the additional information slides. I don't know if Sean has um, a slide share or something that um, where he wants to put those up. Uh, to if, watch the previous talks, the, the other talks. Oh, all the talks. Yeah, yeah we didn't do a slide share in the past. We have but the Sean recordings. has the, the four talks. So Sean, if oh, you have Sean. a minute to add those links to the chat, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sean's still backstage. So um, Sean, if you get a chance, uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll make sure that that happens before we um, shut this down. And then because the talks are recorded, the unfortunately the chats are not. So grab those links now if you can. Um, otherwise, I tag Sean on some tweets, and you can maybe tweet at Sean and get those links if you don't get them by now. Um, but yeah. Well, that wraps that wraps Cube Crash. So for all of you who are with us, thank you so much for attending today. Thank you for being here for the content. We really love the clouding community and the space of bringing this to all of you with some awesome technology and some really good people is an exciting thing to do. Yeah. And